Good evening, everybody. All right, this gives us a chance to to definitely see the benefits of a candlestick formation, where even though the Dow is down 45 points today, look where it ended up. Ended up near the high end of the trading, above the open, bouncing up off the 50, with stochastics just getting toward the oversold area. So that was... It was the weak sister out of, out of all the indexes today. The compelling chart or message was uh, that the NASDAQ opened at the low end of the range, bobbled for a little bit, but then you could start seeing the green candle form forming. And all day long came, continued to come up, getting you... Uh, back up above the previous day's open. So it makes this very simple. The pre-market futures are showing positive tomorrow. You definitely want to be buying. Let's see. The dollar has been heading down. It's kind of broken through this level right here, so it's still in a downtrend. And bond prices have been slowly coming back up to the top of the top of the range. So that means interest rates aren't really going anywhere right now. We uh, shorted May uh, soybeans as it broke down through this level. We're staying short. Uh, looks like a wave one, wave two, wave three, and. We're, we're in an uptrend on April live cattle with our stop right here that if they came back down to this level, more than likely they were bringing it back down to test the T-line. But if it touches the T-line and bounces back up, telling us our uptrend's in progress, we'll get right back in. Still on a five-day downtrending channel. Which one's that, Canadian trader? Let's see. A, I think it's J. Gold prices still moving up steadily. This is the April contract. Still suspected coming up toward the uh, uh, toward the two hundred. Uh, we bought uh, the uh, live cattle at two levels. I forget what the first level. The first level is when it gapped up from the uh, bullish Harami somewhere in here. And the next one was when it was gapped up going through this level here. So uh, right about in here and right here was where we bought. And we'll still buy again uh, or re-enter if it hits the T-line and bounces back up, telling us our uptrend is in progress. Uh, uh, still on a five-day downtrending channel. It is, but we had buying today in the oversold area at the 50-day uh, moving average. That's all indications that... Uh, that we might be seeing the bottom in here. Okay, some of the biggies, like Nugget, still heading up slowly. Still suspect the 50 to be the target. And Labu came on strong today. Big bullish engulfing off the 50, which is making a lot of the uh, biotechs very strong charts. So before we get into some interesting charts. We'll take a look at the biggies that everybody's going to ask about. Netflix, nothing yet as far as any major trend. Now, it did do a bullish engulfing signal here at the 50. So you can be buying this one, but obviously it needs to break through this congestion area. 
Is Labu a cradle pattern? You can consider it a cradle pattern, yes. Um, I would, uh, yeah, it's not. Usually the uh, this candle and this candle are about the same. But the fact that they did a bullish engulfing signal, bullish confirmation, and a close above the T-line with stochastics curling up, yeah, whether you wanted to call it a cradle pattern or not, it's still got that, that reversal uh, aspect to it. Apple also is in kind of a, a sideways mode. Definitely see, need to see a uh, strong uh, uh, signal to break this one out. Amazon, kind of the same thing. Right back into this trading range. However, notice where it opened today. Smack dab on the 50 and came back up. So if it starts trading positive as an aggressive trade, you can start buying it as a more uh, high probability trade. If it breaks through this level right here, you can also be buying it. Tesla, that's a nice rounding bottom. Bullish Rami, Doji Sandwich, break out through this level. Next target should be at least testing this area, and then possibly in a wave three. And NVIDIA, also a good-looking chart. You can be buying this one at 110 or higher. If it breaks through there, you've got your kind of your J-hook pattern telling you you're heading back up to this level. So those are the biggies. We recommended CYH today because of the scoop pattern. You can still be buying this one aggressively if they gap this one up above the open of today and start trading it positive. That would be your doji sandwich break out of a scoop pattern with a strong sling, slingshot effect. Oh. Yeah. Huh. Okay, now, all right. And take a look at Kara. Kara's been in this trend channel. I think your next target is somewhere up in this range. So I point out Kara because the biotechs all are acting well. We'll have a bunch of them as we look at them. And AAOI, that was one that we put the calls on on Friday. Working out very nicely. Anticipate this moving up to this trend trajectory. So the calls we bought, I think, were the April 55s at around $3.60. I think they closed at around 6.30 today. Looking for them to go, possibly, if it moves real quick up here, up to the $10 to $12 range. Cool. Slow curve breakout. Should be in a nice steady uptrend. Uh, here's one that we looked at a while back and it got whacked. Jim, I think your microphone is still on. If you can hear me. Let's see. Yeah. All right. Um, you might want to take a look at this one. Notice what happened when they hit the bottom here. Doji, inverted hammer doji, left-right combo. Even if it pops just up to here. That's going to give you a good uh, 45, 50 percent uh, uh, price move. Something we want to keep an eye on. Uh, we recommended ON also because of the potential scoop pattern, but it opened lower. 
I'd still be a buyer if it comes up through here because uh, of the handle. That's why you want to recognize that uh, we do this one. IIVI, good chart. You, and shop. That's why you want to recognize the patterns, where they should be breaking out. Uh, Shopify, still a nice steady uptrend. And Kite had been a short, but it was covered. Now get ready for that uh, bullish confirmation, kind of giving you a little scoop pattern. This could have a good strong move back to the upside. And ASX, we recommended that last week. Just a nice steady eddy at this point. Cooper Tire, same scenario. As long as it stays above the T line, you stay with this one. CTML, well, well, well. Not coming up over here. And Kiwi. Kiwi would have been one that if you had closed it out today on the lower open, you get ready to buy it back on positive trading. Because you've got kind of a J-hook pattern setting up if they open open this one positive. Another biotech, SSPI. Got this nice slow curve, uh, getting ready to break out. And noodles, we looked at that one during the day. There's your J-hook pattern. Notice where the J-hook pattern is occurring, right here at the resistance level. So when we break out of a J-hook pattern to a resistance level, what's that telling us? We've got probably wave three heading up to the 200-day moving average. BSAR, you stay long on this one. And UCTT, stay long on this one. Nice steady eddies. And as you can see, with the markets moving up or down, they haven't been able to close any of these. Uh, uh, maybe it's CTML. Oops. No, that one's not coming up. CMTL. No, that's it. This one, if it opens positive, notice what it hasn't been able to do. Hasn't been able to close below the T-line. It starts trading positive. Your J-hook pattern's in progress. Lots of fry pan bottom type patterns. Fold. You can be buying this one on positive trading. Light, coming off the kicker signal, and notice where you are right now, right here at the breakout area. Uh, be ready to buy this one on positive trading. And CERN is one that I was going to use as an illustration. Notice what happened coming out of this fry pan bottom. Right here at a resistance level, right where it's, this fry pan bottom started, a positive open. This has all the elements where you can, your entry strategies, can be very simple to identify, which is doji, gap up, little best friend. It's going to move in the direction of how they open it after a doji. You're right here at a resistance level. It told you if they're trading positive after a doji that the resistance level isn't going to act as a resistance anymore, which means you've got a fry pan bottom breakout. So the more pieces of evidence you can put into your analysis, the higher the probability you're going to be in a good trade. Another one where kind of broke out today after a little inverted hammer, kind of a doji sandwich. That one you could probably look at some of the calls on on this one. Whoops. Well, shut up. Well, well, well. Anticipating a quick pop like this, which should take you up into this kind of that that tra trajectory range. FMI, slow curve, get ready for the next wave. So these are some you just want to keep an eye on. IPXL, there's your best friend. 
there's kind of your island reversal. That makes more than likely the 200 your next target. Uh, another one of the little biotechs. CLSD did a left right combo. They can get up through the 50s. Um, and kind of see the bottoming action in here. Look at all the dojis we're looking at. Uh, I haven't been able to figure out how to do that. Eric, I just, uh, that's why I try to repeat the, uh, the symbol for everybody. Since they've upgraded this, uh, I don't know how to do that. Now that one. No, it goes there and as soon as I click on the chart. Cal, I think, is another biotech. Little left-right combo. Start watching this one to see if they're, they're going to bring this back up above the T-line. And TGTX was a short until the morning star signal. Get ready to buy this one. Wave one, wave two, wave three could be about a a ten point move, taking you up into the twenty one or twenty two dollar range. So again, that's kind of a function of which stocks do you want to go after? The ones that have the biggest upside potentials on a wave three. KND first target here if it breaks through, again your wave one magnitude. There you go, Vladimir. I hope you can hear me now. An APOP. This is one of those where you watch your 10-minute chart. So something major has happened here, obviously. Just like you saw on here, something major has happened. So. If you identify the breakout, how do you trade this from here? You go to your 10-minute chart and see if they're keeping it up above the 10-minute uh, the T-line. Yeah, I don't know whether I can do that. Does that change anything? No, still. Uh, I've got my magnifier box on, but apparently that doesn't show up on the. Now, to get a little bit more leverage. Ah. I don't know how to get to the warrants, but the APOP warrants are trading at, I think, around 360. They were up 248% today, so you might get a little bit of more leverage out of that. And I know Abe uh, pointed this one out, Zyop. There's kind of your cradle type pattern, back dab off the 200. Get ready to buy this if it comes up through today's high. That would tell you you've got another strong wave breaking out into new territory. Square. Same scenario, kind of a scoop pattern. If this one opens positive, probably have a high probability that uh, uh, it's going to move a lot higher. Now, I've got a little star next to EXAS, because if you gap up through this level, that's probably going to follow through with strength. Isn't square a cradle? You know, remember, a cradle usually has a downtrend. I would I would look at this more as a scoop type pattern. You can call it a cradle if you want to, but I'd as I say, usually you want to see the cradle occur after a downtrend, and then it starts a strong uptrend. 
Z-Y-N-E, broke out today with a, uh, there's your left-right combo followed by a doji sandwich. Good prospect that this one's heading higher. Just based upon that, uh, that doji sandwich. Bullish and golfing, off the 50. You're ready to buy this one. This is TT. D, the trade desk. AC, HC. Another one. This one kind of used as an example that when it hit the 200 a day, that's when you flip to your 10 minute chart. And see what it did there. You take your profits. You can always buy back. Uh, if it, it does a convincing buying, I would have still been a little bit leery that they weren't showing a lot of strength once they got up above the T-line. You definitely want to see a bullish confirmation. You can always be buying back now on positive trading tomorrow. But when you get something moving that big, that fast, and it hits a resistance level, use the 10-minute uh, uh, to tell you what's happening. MCRB. Left-right combo, next target, 200-day moving average. BKD, gapped up through the resistance level. Another one that has a good likely prospect of coming back up and testing at least the 50-day moving average. ABCO, slow fry pan bottom. Big inverted hammer right off the 50-day uh, moving average. Bullish confirmation. Wave one, wave two, going into wave three. INSY, I-N-S-Y. Morning star signal. Stutter step. Buy on positive trading. Your next target should be the 200-day moving average. And AKAO, we made money with this one earlier. Coming out of the fry pan bottom, stay long until you see a sell signal and a close below the T-line. Now you've got kind of that little cradle pattern here. This one I'd be buying on positive trading with the anticipation you're going into another steady eddy wave. And how can you tell whether it's going to be a steady eddy wave? Just going on the old uh, adage of the Japanese rice traders, let the market tell you what the market is doing. If this one's telling us it was in a steady uptrend above the T-line, when it gets back up above the T-line, that's usually uh, uh, the same nature as the previous trend. ZGNX came up nicely. You're right here at this breakout area. I'd rather pay uh, 1140 for it knowing that it broke out to the upside. And then a few on the short side, just to have some in your portfolio as a safety factor. HIIQ, the uh, dumpling top, now with the prospects of heading down to the 200-day uh, moving average. The finish line also had that berry scoop pattern. I'd be ready to short this, especially if it came back down through today's open. With that big kind of bearish kicker signal, that tells you there's probably more, uh, uh, so Vladimir, you might have to, oh, he can't hear me. I don't know why. Uh, Jim, can you hear me? I think your microphone is still on. Yes, we're getting to that one. We're still short ACN. Bearish kicker signal. Notice what it used for a resistance level today, right smack dab at the 50. UFS, another. Wave 3 starting. If this opens lower tomorrow, you can be shorting it. And then BGFV, I would suspect this is where you kind of observe the obvious. The obvious is you're in a downtrend. Every cut time it comes up and hits the resistance, or hits a resistance level, they sell it off. 
I would suspect you're heading down here to around just below the $12 range. Okay. Free market futures will be a good indication of what they're planning to do, but the fact, just just the uh, descriptive fact that they couldn't, after the uh, failure of the health care uh, bill being passed on Friday, everybody was losing confidence, but notice what they did. They, that uh, the, the fact that they brought the markets back up and they weren't selling them off, told you the bullish sentiment was still, still there. They aren't ready to sell this market off yet. Okay, are there any general questions on candlesticks? If not, Jim, go ahead and do the double line. All right, in 2.8 seconds, do the next double line because they started without you. GNCA, you can get ready to buy this one on positive trading, the J-hook pattern. Oops, we're still scrolling. All right. Win Resorts. Just stay long on this one, as long as it stays above the T-line. SBGL, the gold stocks should be acting well. That's a good-looking chart. Uh, I'd still be a buyer of this one on positive trading if it breaks out through this level. Anytime they're gapping it up to a resistance level, that means there's probably not going to be very much regard for that resistance level very long. IMMU, all you can do here is stay long. RNN, nice J-hook pattern with a little scoop type pattern to it. Make sure your volume stays hefty on a 40 cent stock. And ITSE, uh, you can be buying this one. Obviously, it needs to break through this level to give you a fry pan bottom breakout. And ASPS, morning star signal off the 50. You can stay long. Just uh, make sure your stops. At this point, I'd have my stop at uh, probably right here. The previous close needs to stay up above that level. Oops, I don't know where I went with that. AMKR. Oh, because I've missed it. Uh, another nice little J-hook pattern. You can buy this one on positive trading. Sedge. Whoops. Little uh, best friend gap up. If you're buying on positive trading tomorrow, just watch to see what it does if and when it gets to the, uh, the 200. Riggles. That's a good fry pan bottom breakout. Just make sure your volume is is hefty. Five below, big breakout. Look for a 45 degree to come off of here. Blue, all you can do right now is if you're back long, stay long as long as it stays above the T line. Whoops. Big fry pan bottom. Now you're in. Use the T line as your guide. NVAX. Nothing here yet. Need to have good volume. I mean, probably over a million shares a day. You can buy it on positive trading. Just be aware you don't have any direction to this one right now. 
OCA or OCRX. Another one you can be buying on positive trading. Again, make sure your uh, volume is good. USR. You can start buying this one. I'd like to see a strong signal telling you the bulls are taking control. But if you like it, you can be buying it as long as it stays above the T line. IPXL, we did this one. Look for a 45 degree to come off of here. MDRX, big bullish breakout. Stay long. Anticipate that it's going to come back up into this trend uh, trajectory. NPTN, big bullish engulfing, kind of your, uh, there's your bullish doji sandwich. Be a buyer of this one on positive trading. Just be aware of what happens once it gets to the uh, 50. Micron, just stay long as long as it stays above the T-line. Notice that the profit taking of yesterday or on Friday is over. You can still be buying this one on positive trading. INVN. Needed to break out, which it didn't do. I'd still use to this high right here as a buy point. If it breaks out through there, kind of telling you they're breaking through this resistance level. If it stays below that level too long and you're long, I'd get get back out and wait for it to break out above it. MNK, uh, bottoming action, little morning star type signal, bearish or bullish harami. I'd be a buyer once it closes above the T-line. NVAX, did we do this one? Yeah, it needs a lot of volume to break out. Did we do those? Yeah, AK, okay, we're doing a repeat here. CVG. Bullish uh, candle, buy this one on positive trading. Telling you they broke out through this downtrending channel after this little bullish engulfing signal. Ah, uh, if you're short, it if it opens positive, cover your short position tomorrow. And ESRX, same scenario. You can see how it was basing in here. So this is where you start analyzing when to come out of a trade. Look where you are in the oversold area, and you're starting to see dojis in the oversold area. On any buying, I would have closed out the position. What's my worst case scenario? They bounced up to the T-line and bring it back down. I can always reshort it. But the probabilities right now, with you being in the oversold area and seeing indecision, tells you to start, start covering your uh, short positions. Get ready to start buying. Snap. Everybody that's recommended were part of the uh, IPO uh, distribution group. You can stay long, but I'd just be, uh, I'd always have a stop in. Today I'd have my stop, uh, or tomorrow I'd have my stop at today's open. It shouldn't come back down through that level. We did Micron, Mylon. You can get ready to buy this one. It's co uh, colorblind. Let me see. Looks like a little... Uh, Bullish belt hold off the 50. I, if I was short, I would have covered the shorts. I wouldn't be buying it until they close it above the T line. How do you protect portfolio from real downside? Have your stops placed at appropriate spots that they shouldn't be trading. XIV, bullish and golfing. Get ready to buy this on positive trading tomorrow. NAC. Another one, nothing great, but if it starts trading positive, you can buy this one with the anticipation that bouncing up off off the uh, 200, your next target is the 50-day moving average. I think we did Tesla. Tesla's moving nicely. ARZL. Bullish and golfing. Get ready to buy this one on positive trading. Also, make sure your uh, volume is good. MMYT pulled back today. It's still in an uptrend as long as it stays above the T-line, but I'd want to see it trade positive tomorrow. If it opens lower and comes back down, especially trades below the T-line, I'd close it out. 
because that means it's kind of lost its energy up here at the same place that it topped out before. ENTA, you can be buying this one. Nice doji sandwich breakout through the 50 out of a fry pan bottom. That's a good looking chart. Under Armour. You can be buying this one. Probably doesn't have the resiliency in it that it used to. But if you're buying, stay with it as long as it stays above the T line. KNX, stay short. But you've had a gap down. I'd have my stop right now, or I wouldn't want to see it close back up above the 200. Halliburton, stay short. Same scenario. Wouldn't want to see it uh, come back up above the 200. Rocks, just stay long on this as long as it stays. Notice the uh, message. Then your first confirmed buy signal. There's your best friend signal starting back up again. And DHIL, bullish Harami, gap up. You can be buying this one, especially if it comes up through the 200, breaking this downward channel, then just watch to see if it gets to the 50-day moving average. And ITK, oops, not coming up here. ACAD, bullish engulfing. I'd still want to see it get through or open positive. Definitely want to see it get through the 20 which would also confirm the break out of this little downtrending channel. U.S. Steel, stay short. A.K. Steel, ooh, I can't tell what color. Was that a green candle? Yes. Might be ready to start buying this one off the, uh, uh, off the 200. Valero. Nothing of great consequence here. Wouldn't be trading this one at all. There's no direction to it. Southwest. This one you can get ready. You're in the oversold area, left-right combo. If this starts trading above the T-line, you can start going after it. Netflix, we did. If you like it, you can be buying it, but you're still sideways. I'd rather see it break out through the top of uh, the resistance level. CLVS, nothing of any great consequence here. If this one opened lower and I was long, I'd close out the position. You can see there's no direction. PKI, just stay long. Notice how it's using the T-line as support. We did CYH. You definitely want to be buying this one on positive trading. You don't want to see it close halfway down this candle, which would also be the uh, T-line area, because that tells you you're right back into the uh, trend again. And the reason we'd be buying it is of the uh, uh, the uh, breakout of that scoop pattern. MDRX, you break out. Look for a 45 degree. Rand Gold uh, opened up positive, traded back. The golds are moving up, but they're having a hard time getting started. Um, uh, AU, GG, they all opened higher and traded lower by the end of the day. So I'd still be a little bit leery of the golds, even though they're moving in the right direction. Bitta, you get ready to buy this one on the J-hook pattern breakout. I think we put uh, a call strategy on this one in the options room. A breakout to this level. Look for a 45 degree coming off of that same trajectory right there. Why would the weekly chart on Nugget show uptrend in stochastics, whereas the daily shows nearly overbought? Because on a short-term basis, it's overbought. Uh, 
on a weekly basis. Whoops, that's not pretty. Yeah, so you're, you've gotten close to overbought on the uh, daily, but your weekly, if the uh, daily starts backing off, you can see that your weekly isn't going to be showing any strength just yet. ETX, stay long, look for a T-line crunch. Hoss, uh, that's not good. That shooting star, you should have been out of it when it opened lower today. Do we do this one? No. Um, stay long on this one, but this one has to open positive tomorrow. If it opens lower with your stochastics up here, that means this is probably a downtrending channel versus a breakout to the upside. And salt stayed above the T-line, but same scenario. It needs to open positive and break this channel. If it opens lower, you're probably still stuck in this downtrending channel. And CLDX. Nothing here to get excited about. Um, if you're buying it on positive trading, obviously it needs to get through the 50. It's just not a very uh, uh, very exciting chart. Lots of congestion in here. I'd probably be trading something else. STX. Be ready to go short on weakness tomorrow. I definitely would not be long on this one. tap traded up a little bit in the oversold area if I was short I'd get ready to cover this on any strength tomorrow okay Crocs nothing you're sideways no trend even though you've got some buying you don't have anything that's really uh, showing any conviction of breaking out into a new trade. I'd wait for a breakout. And CSX, the uh, railroads are kind of still drifting. If you're short on this one, you stay short. Just don't let it close above the T-line. Okay, I'm going to try that, John. Uh, right click on chart. All right. Select edit chart properties. Hmm. Maybe I have to do it up here. Right click. No. Left click. No. Eh, I don't see it. Try this. Up here. Eh, I'll have to figure it out. BSTM, good little breakout. Just stay long until you see a sell signal. CSX short, yeah, you stay short as long as it doesn't come up above the T-line. AMH, nothing here. If this opens lower, you're out of it. It needs to open positive and trade positive to stay in it. DXCM, another one that needs to open positive with your best friend, gap up. Now you're looking for it to break out through this level. Uh, I'd put a buy stop just above this high right here. 
which looks like right around 85. I uh, want to see it break out through that level. And beat, just stay long as long as it stays above the line. The 20-year notes have come up. They're right here, but they are having a hard time getting through this resistance level. Notice it opened higher and closed lower today. So, And you're in the overbought area, so you might be still stuck in that trade channel. APOP, yeah, you trade this one off your 10-minute chart tomorrow. CYCC. Uh, nothing here. You might be bottoming, but there's no reversal signal. You're bottoming at the same level. I'd probably be trading something else. Uh, let's see. CSX has a bearish crossover of T-line. Yeah, that doesn't really matter all that much. We're not buying the crossovers. Um, I would just stay short. Ashi Paul, is kind of a uh, vanilla, vanilla-lized uh, concept. It's probably mostly for much longer-term trading. The T-line is the most effective for short-term trading. Is IIVI a BOP? Uh, breakout? No, it's just a bullish confirmation of your kind of your morning star signal. Does the volatility of the stock affect the power of the candlestick patterns when they are recognized? And does the magnitude of the signal need to correspond with the price volatility? Some charts look smooth and steady, where others appear more like scattered noise. If they look like scattered noise, then go someplace else. That means there's no pattern. Pick out something where you can see, uh, yeah, see the price move. Um, yeah, there's some charts that just don't have anything. What we're looking for is the investor sentiment building up, ready for that breakout. And just a lot of people say, what well, do you, especially over in the options area, do you trade the delta or gamma? No, because you can see what, what probably would happen to delta, gamma, or whatever you're trading based upon this chart being so flat. We just recognize it as being a fry pan bottom because this magnitude of movement right here has nothing to do with the delta over here. AMN. Big morning star signal. You can start paying attention to this one if it closes back up above the T-line. Oh, it probably works. Uh, yeah, it probably works well for the weekly and monthly. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I, let's see. I'll take a gander. Yeah, works just as well for for all time frames. Uh, John, I do my scanning on TC2000 or Metastock. I, uh, this is CQG, and CQG just has better graphics than the others, and it moves a lot faster for these type of presentations. Unfortunately, it's about $1,200 a month. So you can get just as good uh, uh, analysis off of your meta stock or your or any other chart that you that you're using. And usually, I think Thinkorswim and some of those get their feed from CQG. So it's all the same information. Okay, it'll be important to see what they do with the markets tomorrow. Obviously, if we uh, wake up and the pre-market futures are positive, they're taking things back up on the Dow as well as if they bring the NASDAQ up through the T-line, that tells us they're not selling this market off. All right, last one, tech, left-right combo. If you're buying this one, you have to see it get through the 50-day uh, moving average.
Okay. Well, we're done early tonight. So, everybody have a good evening. We'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning. We'll see you then.